Well, if I'm going to govern the position of the derailleur with the length of the chain, I'm going to need to put in the chain. So let's do that now. We'll put in a, a couple of circles because the chain is going to go around these pulleys. All right? And I'm going to add for a line. I'm going to fly the line out because I want the line to be two tangent because it's going to go from this circle to this circle. Then it's going to go from this circle to this circle. And then what? From here to here? Now, if I go with a straight line, that's probably pretty valid. But isn't, isn't it more likely to be a arc or a droop of some kind? So why, don't we, why don't we put in an arc? Some value. And then what do I want it to be? I want it to be tangent. Uh, let's see, equal radii, tangent, coincide. Which one of these do I want to get rid of now? Looks like I've got tangency already. Huh. You know what? Do you ever run in a situation where you have to fight with Pro Engineer? No. <laughs> no. So, so what did I do? I said, forget about it. You win. I ain't going to fight. I'm just going to sketch it over again. You notice in this case, I exaggerate a little bit so that I could modify it the way I want it to. See that? I still have a couple of angles for my derailleur. And so where is this going to go? How do I know how this moves? First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this piece out so that I only have the piece of the chain that I'm curious about. And then I'm going to ask for a dimension. I'm going to pick the arc. And then with the control key down, I'm going to pick the endpoints of the arc and then place the dimension. And what kind of dimension is that? Let me do that again. Pick the arc, pick the endpoints of the arc, and then place the dimension. What kind of dimension is that? It looks like arc length, and, and you're right, it is arc length. And you see this like a little, I don't know, you probably can't see this, there's a little arc hat over the top of the dimension. And so I've got arc length, and if I pick both of these and I right click, I can change them to even be angle. So now, they're arc angle. How many of you already knew how to do that? Nobody. How many of you didn't know how to do it and willing to admit it? <laughs> so there's, there's something there. Yeah, how are you supposed to know how that happens? But here, check this out too. If I fly out my constraints and I say make them, make something equal, did you know that you can pick two dimensions to make them equal to? So it doesn't need to be equal radiuses or equal lengths. It can be equal dimensions as well. So now that I've got those two angles equal, check this out. Do you see how the derailleur is moving in a very different way? And there's only one dimension now that controls it? My chain doesn't come to the bottom of this, does it? Let me get rid of this one. My chain goes instead from here to the top here. And then it goes from here to here. And then we're going to put another, another arc that's going to droop the chain across these two places. So far, so good? So with the constraint on, I want to take this end point and put it on this circle. And I want to ask also for tangency here. 
And I've already got tangency here. And so, let's see, what do I have now? I've got kind of a, a droop radius here. Let's call that, say, 85, something big. So it doesn't droop very much. Let's change this one, say, to 45, because that's pretty straight. So what dimension do I have here that is going to allow to float? Let's take both of these and lock these. Well, what controls the position of the derailleur now? Watch this. So it's still doing a kind of a chain take-up thing, isn't it? But how do I make that angle now a function of the length of the chain? Well, first of all, I need to define the chain just a little bit better. Get rid of a couple of extra pieces so that the only thing remaining is the chain itself. See that? And then pick everything except for these two lines. And on the sketch drop down, there's a dimension type called a perimeter. When you create a perimeter dimension, I like to call them a perimeter parameter because it sounds funny. It asks you to choose a dimension that is to vary as a function of that perimeter. So I'll pick my, um, my angle. And so now I've got a number here. It's, it's currently 65. Well, check this out. Let's change it to uh, 66. Or if I modify it, This is now the length of the chain. And the length of the chain is governing the position of the derailleur. Let's change this back to some known value, say 66. And what if I modify now the length of the legs of the derailleur? And so, if I was doing derailleur design, I could also do that pretty effectively now, too. Well, what else can I do now? What if I go back to this very first sketch and I dynamically edit the diameter of these things? Notice how the derailleur functions as it's supposed to, taking up the slack in the chain. Isn't that cool?